Back on the Sports Mag Zone and we turn our attention to the Trinidad and Tobago top flight football competition, the TNT Premier League. Defence force have their work cut out if they are to retain the title. They are currently third hanging, heading into round 14. Great news for them. They are only three points behind leaders AC Port of Spain. Uh, three points actually separate the top four. Uh, let's take a peek at the table as it now stands heading into the weekend's matches. Port of Spain 26 points, Police 2 behind in second on 24, Defence Force third on 23, La Horqueta on 23 points in fourth, so on points they are joined third with Defence Force, just inferior on goal difference. Sando and Prison Service are the other teams in the top six. Morvan, Cal Caledonia and Central FC bottom of the table at the moment. Central FC with a wretched record of 12 losses in their 12 games so far. And uh, their goal difference is minus 41. So maybe Brent can tell us something about Central FC when we speak to him in a couple of minutes from now. Uh, let's look at what happens this weekend. 1976 Phoenix FC versus Police. This is Friday. Defense Force taking on Prison Service and Eagles FC against VS Sando. The Sunday matches in the TT Premier League will be Central FC against Point Fortin and La Horqueta taking on the leaders AC Port of Spain. And uh, we are now joining uh, to give us valuable insight into the state of play football correspondent Brent Sancho. Uh, Brent, welcome to the Sports Mac Zone. Great to have this discussion with you on the TT Premier Football League. Um, can you advise us at the moment, though, about your status with Central FC, which was your club? Are you still in charge? <laughs> very, very much so. I can advise Lance and uh, and hello to Paul and on uh, set. Uh, I'm no longer integrally involved in the day-to-day -day activities of Central FC, and uh, maybe that is a reflection as to the position as what the club is in <laughs> on the table. <laughs> Twelve matches and twelve losses. <laughs> yeah, twelve matches. It's uh, you know, it's it's really uh, a situation where. Uh, there, are, there are clubs within the league that have decided to go very young and with inexperienced players. Uh, at, at least uh, 95 to 90% of the Central FC team is a uh, very inexperienced. Men, uh, that 90 to 95 have not played in the league before. Uh, so they do have uh, the, 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 the challenges in terms of that side of things. Um, but they've had some one or two spirited performances. Look, a lot of the games that they've lost, remarkably not, have all been self-inflicted uh, wounds. They, they've uh, had the situations where they went one goal up against Club Sandu last Sunday to a penalty kick, and then they went on to to implode. And that's been really the story of the season, as you know, with players that are new to a league, uh, that they would make those sorts of mistakes, young players in particular. They, they, they make individual errors, and it has cost them throughout the season. Yeah, um, before we talk about AC Port of Spain, the current leaders in the league, Brent, um, I just alluded to the fact that uh, Defence Force appear to have a, a battle on their hands to retain their title. They did rebound from a mid-February loss to Phoenix um, with a victory over the weekend against Police, I think it was, in a battle of the, of the, of the lawmen. Um, how equipped are the Defence Force this year to be champions again? Yeah, that's a, that's a difficult one. And I'll tell you why. They've, they've had uh, several uh, departures from their team. The, the top goal scoring Brent Sam and Ryan Moore, two of their more clinical and technically gifted players, uh, have gone on to, to other pastures. Uh, and they've lost Kaim Thomas, a, a, a winger that uh, is part of uh, Angus Eve's squad to take on Jamaica this weekend. So they have lost a few. That being said, they've been able to bring in uh, a, ta a young talisman from AC Port of Spain uh, over the transfer period uh, to now lead the lines for them. But I still feel, Lance, with the players that they would have lost during the, the transfer window, it may be a lot for them to try and fill those gaps uh, as other teams try to strengthen. And of course, as they pursue the leaders, AC Port of Spain. Yeah, and Brent, that leads me to my question. What has made AC Port of Spain so dominant this season? I think it's the experience of, of their, their, their national team players and the likes of uh, John Paul Rushford, Dwayne Muckett, uh, just to name a few, who's, who's uh, Poonan Janon, who's now on your screen. 
Uh, those three in particular that operate within the middle of the park have been exceptional throughout the season. Uh, also must be stated as well, Mariah, that they have an experienced goalkeeper in Marvin Phillips and, and a defence that is led by Rudam Abubakar, who hasn't put a foot wrong since he started uh, restarted his uh, season with AC Port of Spain. So those players that I just mentioned have really driven the AC Port of Spain machinery and they've uh, been very not only very difficult to beat, uh, but they've been very difficult to play against uh, a team that, uh, as I mentioned, has uh, a, a good slew, a good slew of very, very talented individuals that has really championed the AC Port of Spain course. Yeah, Brent, you know, sometimes there are teams that perform well, they just don't walk away with the results. And as a result, sometimes their standings on the table, not a true reflection of the type of football that they play. Are there any teams like that that you think is worth mentioning? No, look, I think I think the top five is a top five and they rightfully sit where they sit. And, and I do believe that this league will be decided, uh, of course, with the results that comes with the games against each other in that top five. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, viewers should look out for is teams that have to go to La Hoqueta. It's a place that has, has become very, very tricky for all teams in the league to go and play. Uh, and several of the top teams still have a game against La Hoqueta in La Hoqueta. And I think those games in particular uh, would have an impact as to who is the final winner of the TTPFL. Uh, because, as I said, the, the top five have really separated themselves, not only uh, in the ability to win football games, but the quality that they possess within their squads has made them the better team. So it's still a lot to play for. The table shows you that, and it's very, very tight. Uh, and I believe it will come down to the wire. Yeah, and speaking about coming down to the wire, the TTPFL is, of course, um, live on Sports Max whenever there are matches. And tomorrow, coming up tomorrow, there will be 1976 Phoenix FC versus Police. What are we to expect from that match? Well, I, I believe that the game, the fixtures for this weekend is so far on hold because of the Trinidad Jamaica clash on the weekend. Okay. Um, so it will push it on to the next weekend. Um, but there's one particular fixture that is going to play out, and that is the La Hoqueta Rangers fixture against AC Port of Spain. On Sunday, right? On Sunday. Okay. That game, but, but I'm not sure if it's playing this Sunday, it may play next Sunday. But I think that game in particular is going to have a lot of bearing as to how the title race is, is decided. As I mentioned to you, it is, a, it is a location that most teams struggle to go and get any joy uh, and that AC Port of Spain clash could very well see either a change in fortunes as it relates to the leaders of the league or, of course, AC Port of Spain further stretching their lead at top. Yeah, Brent, I always think about tournaments as uh, more or, or as an overall product, which means it's more than just the football that is played on the field. And you're also talking about a, a lot of what surrounds it, including the crowd support. And I'm interested in what that has been like this season and whether you are pleased with the turnout you're seeing consistently in the stands. And if not, what can be done to improve that area so that the players feel that they are part of the top division of the country's football? On, on the overall, Ricardo, it's been disappointing. Uh, and, and I think a lot of it is down to the fact that, uh, of course, uh, acquiring venues, would you believe, in a country with so many stadiums and facilities has been a challenge. They've not been a situation where a fan could pull up a fixture and there is a list of games going all the way through for the next two, three months till they can plan accordingly. I think the second part of it as well is the fan experience. I think that could be a little bit better because they are, and on the occasions when the top teams meet, having a decent-sized crowd, but the fan experience is just not the same in terms of obviously being able to purchase beverages, where you sit, the viewing of the game, what you experience while you're there. Uh, it's not been that sort of situation. Uh, and I'm, I'm very sure those are two things that the organizers will have to, to try to look at, because at the end of the day, uh, for a fan to keep coming back repetitively to a football fixture, it's not just about who, win or, or who wins or loses on a pitch. It's also about what they experience while they are at that venue. And I think if that could improve, uh, along with what I said in terms of the scheduling and, and the facilities, I think you would see a, a, a more consistent, uh, a, of course, a crowd coming out uh, to the games. 
Yeah, I'm not convinced that the scheduling issues will be necessarily fixed for this campaign, but how do you feel about the aspect of fan experience? Do you feel that this is something that the organizers can improve significantly or even fix for the remainder of this campaign, or do we just call this one a loss and look to get better for the next campaign? Well, I think it is a correlation between the venues and, of course, the fan experience. All of the venues, barring maybe two or three within the, 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 the of course, the league, um, is not owned by the, the organizers. And, and because of that, they can't really put on the sorts of activities that they probably want to do uh, at these facilities. They're, they're rented government facilities and, and they don't have the opportunities to so whether or not uh, issue bar licensing or any sort of licensing that could sell things at the venue, being able to do different things that would, of course, give an appreciation to the fans. So at, at the end of the day, uh, that is something that has to be worked on. I think there needs to be a little bit more thought process behind it because it is significant. We live in a world nowadays where, of course, uh, the, every human being has a lot of value to that dollar that they spend and you have to give them the value or more than the value that they expect. Uh, and of course, that is what is expected of, of, of people that go to watch these games. So it's something that needs to be worked on. And I believe uh, maybe not this season, but in going into the foot, the, the other, the next season is something that needs to be honed into and, and of course improved. Yeah, all right, Rent, stay right where you are because uh, in a few moments from now we'll be continuing a discussion with you. Uh, this time talking about TNT and Jamaica and their friendlies coming up this weekend. We go to break. Back in a moment.